Hallelujah. Uh, I thank God for each one of you and honor Pastor Lucy uh, for inviting me to this pulpit. Um, um, I'm grateful to God because I know this place has been prayed for throughout the week and this morning you've been praying and uh, God is good. Hallelujah. And I know that God has been ministered to us throughout the last couple of um, sessions on God's silence. Hallelujah. Have you been ministered to? Amen, amen, amen. So um, we, we had a, you know, a chat with Pastor Lucy. And, uh, and sometimes, uh, you know, when a woman of God talks, um, you, you sometimes wonder, um, what am I hearing? Uh, where would I want to be? What's going to happen? What's going on? Uh, so when all that question came about and I was, um, I had to pray before God and say, God, uh, show me the way. What do you want me to say? Uh, how do you want me to say it? Uh, where are we as, 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 as a Christian, as a believer, um, speak to me and, and show me with reference to what God has been speaking to this church. And um, most of the time, we really don't understand many things about God, but God knows everything. And when he sees that we don't understand, we're having a problem, we have a misunderstanding, uh, he's just looking at us saying, they are my kids, they are my children. Um, sometimes you let us go and do, you know, fall down, struggle, get in the stand, in the dust. Um, and I was recently to the previous message um, about how Pastor God appeared to her in a dream. And, 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 was show, and the dream was showing, God was showing her that so many excellent things are getting done and, and, and we are excellent, we want to impress, we want to do many good things. Um, but God was saying to her that there's something that we have leaving behind. Um, and that's like a caution. It's, it's, I took that as a caution, like a warning, and I put that on my note, and I said, uh, this is a warning, it's danger, because um, um, the children are falling through the cracks. And Pastor was saying, um, he's, he was seeing somebody in the media just saying, I want to capture the moment. I want to make sure that that picture comes out really nice when they see it on the Facebook or when they see it on the internet or TV. I want to capture the moment. But God is saying that we are forgetting something. And when you forget the children, that's really a huge crap before God. God doesn't want us to forget the children. And, and I was saying, uh, you know, we need to pray. We need to seek the face of God. And even though it feels like, um, like a God is silent, he's really not because um, between um, uh, the, the both old, uh, the Old and the New Testament, the Malachi and the Matthew, the Bible says, or those who study the Bible say that um, God was quiet for 400 years. And sometimes, you know, we don't hear God say anything for a week, for a day, for a month, you know, for a minute. We are like, we want to say, you know, we just want to get there and do something. Uh, so sometimes we need to just listen because even though God is not saying anything, he's doing what? He's listening to us. And sometimes, um, sometimes you go wrong because you don't listen. And, and I see sometimes when you're in a conversation, um, you see that people really want to, People really want to say something. And sometimes, you know, when you're talking with your friends, you can see that there's some people who are really waiting to say something. You know, they're not listening. They're just waiting for their time. And when the time comes, they say something. And that's something that is not even connected to what was being discussed previously. Uh, so, so God can be quiet, but he's not really quiet. I'm going to read a few scripture verses that I have here. Uh, right. Mm -hmm. 
when you did these things and I kept silent, you thought I was exactly like you. By now I align you and send my accusations before you. That is Psalms 50, 21. After this, the Lord will call you. After this, the Lord will hold yourself back. Will you keep silent and punish as beyond measure? That's Isaiah 62 and uh, 64 verse 12, sorry. So, um, as I mentioned about uh, the silence of God for like 400 years, um, and when God came to speak, he came with an explosion, he came with a wonderful thing, he came with, a, with an announcement that the generation is going to be turned around. And that's in the book of Matthew 123. And the Bible says that the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son. They will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Sometimes when, when you hear God's silence and feel his absence, trust his presence. Praise the Lord. Sometimes God will be silent. And you can really hear that, you know, when, when you don't hear somebody talking, you don't know whether they are there or not. You know, if, if, if your sister, your brother, your mom, your uncle, your aunt, if they're in their bedroom and they're not talking, you don't hear any sound. You, you just like, nobody's there. They're so quiet. It's so, like, there's nothing happening. But with God, we are being encouraged to trust his presence. So whatever we, whatever we bring before God, we need to trust him. We need to, when you speak to him, be honest before him. Trust that he hears you. And you'll be talking about God's, God's silence. But when God is silent, it doesn't mean that he forsaken us. For those 400 years when he was quiet, it did not mean that he forgot his people. He did, did not mean he forgot his generation or his inheritance. He was planning something. And when that plan, when that plan came into pass, that's when he spoke through the prophet. That's when he spoke and said that you are a, a son, a son is born. He gave us his only begotten son. So he waited for so many years before he could now speak again and give us his begotten son. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And in some situations, uh, we as human beings wonder where is God? And I realize uh, most most of us went through the COVID for two years plus, and each one of us was affected in one way or the other. You know, a grandmother, a sister, a brother, somebody you know. You know, and and like me, person like me, it, you know, in the healthcare industry, it's it was every day it's happening. Somebody you knew, somebody you saw yesterday, don't see them anymore. So it was a really sad situation. And everybody was asking, was saying, where is God? And sometimes in our emotions, sometimes, you know, in our own, like, fresh, because we don't see anything happening. And we all, we all, we all react in the fresh, you know, because we're in the fresh. You know, when, when you touch with this pain in your body, that's a fresh, and you feel pain, and you, you scream and say, oh, this hurt. It's painful. But God knows that. And God knew that what you are going through. But the thing is that he has not forsaken us. He will never forsake you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Even Jesus Christ, when he was on the cross, you know, he felt like he was being forsaken. When that time, you know, he was sweating, blood was coming out of his sweat. And he said, Father, have you forsaken me? And at that point, he felt, he felt like to Jesus that God was silent. And there's nothing as difficult as a father looking at the son suffer and, and, and he's, he, he himself is in anguish and the son is in anguish too. And there's nothing as sad as that he knows that he cannot do anything because he promised that this was going to happen. So at that moment, Jesus Christ said, Father, Father, have you forsaken me? Did you forget me? But God had not forgotten Jesus because he had made a promise that was going to save the whole universe. And he is there all the time. He will never leave you. 
He will never forsake you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, so God, God needed, God knew that the world needed a savior. And consequently, he sacrificed Jesus to save mankind. Although it was a difficult, dark day, but he said, I have to make sure that it happens. And it happened. And when Christ died, rose again, and you all know what happened, praise the Lord. So, so we, God cannot leave us, he will not forsake us. So when we, uh, and I was given an example of um, uh, Hezekiah. We all know the book of um, Isaiah, Isaiah uh, 38 from verse 1, that Hezekiah was sick. And when he was sick, the Bible says that um, he was sick unto death. He was going to die. And he, and, and he knew the, sick, the kind of sickness he was going through. The Bible says he was sick unto death. And at that point, he felt that God did not talk. You know, God was silent at that time. And sometimes you don't know why God gets silent, but he knows. <laughs> he knows everything. Praise the Lord. So, so the prophet Isaiah um, went to tell Hezekiah that you're not only going to be sick, but you're also going to die. Keep your house in order. And when he found that, he just prayed before God. He went before God and he said, he reminded God of his youth, how he was faithful, how he did the great things. But when he did that, he did not he did not feel stumble, he did not trip, he did not complain, he did not beg or lose his mind. Or he said, God, he reminded God of those years. And, and most of us, you know, when you go through a difficult situation, how many of us remember to go and tell God? How many remember to go back and look back and see? what God has done for us in the past. Most of us, we forget about everything. We just like, me, 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 me. He did, not, he did not complain or stumble, but he just reminded God. At that point, he felt like God was silent to his prayer. He felt that God did not say anything. But he kept praying. He kept trusting God. He kept believing in God. And before he, before he got his message, before the man of God brought the message, God had already answered. And guess what God said to him? Therefore, the prophet told um, Hezekiah that God had added that before that, before that, before Isaiah could leave the king's palace, God answered Hezekiah's prayers. And therefore, the prophet told Hezekiah that God had added 15 years, hallelujah, for Hezekiah to be, uh, for, he was strong and he was in the face of adversity. Uh, he was strong, and he prayed and trusted God. And God, under 15 years to his life, hallelujah, God healed him and under 15 years to his life. Praise the Lord. So when you fear, when you feel that God is not speaking to you, God is listening. Praise the Lord. His ear is inclining. He's listening to you. Even though he may be quiet, his answer is coming. Praise the Lord. He'll be quiet by his answer is coming. So that silence should be a source of strength to you. Praise the Lord. Have the silence be a source of strength. You be encouraged. When they start silent, know that God is speaking. But though you don't hear anything, God is speaking. Hallelujah. Uh, wise men are not always silent, but they know when to be silent. So if you are wise, you know, you know, m m most of us would like to talk, we like to say something, and it's good to do it, but sometimes you need to find an opportunity when you need to do it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And, uh, and, and that's wisdom. You know, God gives you wisdom to know when to say something and when to be silent. And God is the best listener. You don't need to shout or cry out loud because he hears even, even the silent prayer of a sincere heart. So your heart is sincere, and you're, you're, you're just, you know, like mumbling your, your, your mouth. Uh, you know, just, you know, like Hannah, you know, just mumbling, saying something. And, and his husband, and he kind of thought that, you know, she was drunk. She was maybe taking too much wine. Even though you're just mumbling like that, just know that God is listening. He's listening. Just like we see those 400 years, he was just kind of silent. 
Well, when he came up with miracle, it was a huge miracle that saved the whole universe. Praise the Lord. So when God is, you know, he's working some, he's strengthening your faith. And I know that by faith, you know, you, you, you will hear him. It may be a still small voice. Sometimes we may expect a huge noise. God may not, may not be speaking. Even though it's a still small voice, God will eventually talk. And God's timing is the best timing. Praise the Lord. You know, sometimes you want things to get done quickly. Or when you are praying, you know, you know, we see the prayer of Hezekiah. He prayed, but he trusted God. He waited upon God for God to answer the prayer. He was not in a hurry to, like, you know, speak, 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 speak. He was just there waiting upon the Lord. And, you know, it's good to trust in the Lord. Trust the Lord will speak to you. Trust that the Lord hears. He will hear you. Take refuge in his faithfulness. Praise the Lord. You need to take refuge in, in God's faithfulness uh, because God is faith when he promised. He, what he promised, he'll bring it to pass. Praise the Lord. And, and, and some of us have, been, have seen that, you know, being born again for many years. Um, you know, you, you, we have seen God's faithfulness. So when I say God is faithful, he's really faithful. Just wait upon him. You know, sometimes, you know, I, I've gone through many, many challenges in my life. And at that point, I really feel, you know, just, just like as a kaya, I would feel like there's nothing happening here. I don't see anything. And sometimes the moment the enemy might talk to you and say to you, oh, it's not working. It's not working. Try something else. But it's going to work. Praise the Lord. If you wait upon the Lord, God is going to say something to you. Behind heavy silence is a mighty God who loves you. Hallelujah. When it's just like soul sirens, you don't hear anything. There is a mighty God. Hallelujah. There's a mighty God who loves you. And is willing, more than willing, to meet your needs. Praise the Lord. It's God is more than willing to meet your needs. Uh, and Psalms 46 verse 10 says, Be still and know that I am God. Praise the Lord. Be still and know that I am God. And the Bible says, I will be honored by every nation. I will be honored throughout the world. Praise the Lord. So let's be still and know God is God, and he will answer our prayers. He will come and speak to us. Hallelujah. When you hear God's silence, feel his absence, trust in his presence. If there's anything I want us to bring home, that's what it is. When you hear God's silence and feel his absence, trust in his presence. He is there. There's no wasting time in waiting upon the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's know that God is listening to us and is going to answer our prayer. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm going to call Pastor Lucy to come back. Amen. Amen. Put us together, Pastor Lucy. Amen. Amen. I feel like, should we conclude there? Amen. Let's appreciate Minister Simon. When you feel God is silent and you feel like he's absent, trust his, trust his. And you know what, Minister Simon, have you seen the bulletin today? From the pastor's desk and I didn't write it. It's from Pastor Mickey. The highlight is, be still. Wow, I'm just loving what the Holy Spirit is doing here. Praise the name of the Lord. And so I'm just going to uh, do a conclusion uh, back to our text. I'm just going to do a conclusion back to our text. Uh, Psalms 40, I mean, is Isaiah 42. And now I'm going to read from verse 10 because I want to bring this home. Amen. I'm going to bring this home. Sing unto the Lord. This is a song about the Lord. Sing unto the Lord a new song. You know, this about his silence is part of the song that we are singing unto the Lord. A new song and his praise from the end of the earth. Ye that go down to the sea 
and all that is therein, the isles and the inhabitants thereof. Remember when we started this series, I said this series is for all people, whether you are a believer, whether you are a non-believer, this message is for all. So sing unto the Lord, sing unto the Lord a new song. We are singing a new song. We are making a declaration. This declaration is for all and to the ends of the earth, everyone. It doesn't matter whether you are on land, island, in the sea, everywhere, all the inhabitants thereof, sing unto the Lord. Let the wilderness and the cities thereof lift up their voices. You know, yesterday, Minister um, uh, Monica and the team that does uh, evangelists evangelism yesterday they went to the city of new york and they were walking around new york declaring the name of jesus and i was preparing this sermon i watched them and i said now listen the cities and thereof they are lifting up their voices the villages that canada does inhabit let the inhabitants of the rock sing let them shout from the top of the mountains no place has been left. The wilderness, the cities, the villages, the mountains, the rock, everywhere. And what is the shout? What are we singing about? This is the song. This is what is in our mouth. This is the declaration. Let them give glory unto the Lord. And declare his praise in the island. Glory unto the Lord. And declare his praise in the island. Glory unto the Lord. Today, Angel led us in one of my favorite praise songs that all the other gods are the works of man, but he is the most high God. All glory is unto the Lord, and we declare praise unto the Lord. This is why the Lord shall go forth as a mighty man. He shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. He shall cry. Yeah, roll. He shall prevail against his enemies. I'm going to repeat that again. The Lord shall go forth as a mighty man. He shall stir up jealousy like a man of war you know the people who go for war they have what we call a battle cry when they pursue and are going to attack there is a battle cry there is what they say when it is time to attack and the bible says that the lord will stir up jealousy like a man of war he shall cry, yeah, roll. He shall prevail against his enemies. And then our text is, has been here. We have been talking about this. I have long time held my peace. He has been silent. He has been silent. And we talked about this in the first day. He has been silent. He has been silent, but Minister Simon has brought it that his silence is not forever. Praise the name of the Lord. And he has given us examples of people that they experienced silence, but it wasn't forever. Between Malachi and Matthew, it was 400 years, but it wasn't forever. When the silence was over, the Lord did something that today has given us victory. They have tried to silence the church, but it is still continuous because when he breaks the silence, it's like a mighty man of war. 
Praise the name of the Lord. And that is why I'm saying I'm bringing this home. A long time I have held my peace. I have been still. And I want to declare prophetically that the Lord's silence is not forever. It doesn't matter what situation you have been. It doesn't matter what situation the church has been. Remember the Lord gave us a warning from the beginning that church let's go back to our position. Our position is on the knees. Once we start in our position, at the Lord's silence is not forever. The battle belongs to the Lord because he has held his peace. He has been still. He has reflamed himself. But now, but now, he will cry like a travailing woman. And for the mothers who are here, who knows what it means to be in pain of travail, a travailing woman cannot hold still. The mothers in this house say hallelujah. If you have experienced, eh, eh, hallelujah. <laughs> the mothers in the house, hallelujah. If you are in travailing pain, you cannot hold still. You try to sit and the pain comes and you're like, uh oh, ah, sitting position is not okay. You try to lie down, the pain comes and you're like, uh oh, I better stand up. And the Lord says, but now I cry like a travailing woman. I will destroy and devour at once. So church, are we ready? Are we ready for what happens after the silence? Ask your neighbor, are you ready? Are you ready? Okay, can you give a simpler version? Because I can see some people need a simpler version for what it means to travel. I have kept silent from ages past. I have been quiet and restrained myself. But now I will groan like a woman in labor. A woman in labor is a woman who is ready to give birth. That's what it means. Okay? You get it now? That's what it means. Gasping breathlessly. Church, are we ready for after the silence? And that's why in this series of the silence, the Lord has kept on telling us, in the silence, don't leave your place. In the silence, don't quit. In the silence... Keep doing what you are supposed to do because he will not hold off forever. And as I was reading, it's like when he arises, what is he going to do? Verse 15, the Bible says, and now listen and just be on alert. He says, I will lay waste the mountains and the hills. I will dry up all the other gestations. I will turn rivers into islands and dry up marshes. This is battle, fighting for the church. I'm praying right now in the name of Jesus that your spiritual antennas right now, they start catching what the Lord is doing. In the name of Jesus, I pray for spiritual understanding now. May you start to understand what the spirit of the Lord is saying to the church. The next verse says, I will lead the blind by a way they did not know. When, he's, when he arises, when he is not silent anymore, I will lead the blind by the way they did not know. I will guide them by paths they have not known. Unfamiliar paths, ways that you have not gone through again. I will turn darkness to light in front of them. You know, in the times of silence, everything seems like darkness. 
But when silence is over, when the season of silence is over, the darkness that was darkness in front of you turns into light. And rough places turns into level ground. I don't know whether somebody is receiving this. I don't know whether you're prepared for this. This is what I will do for them. And I will not forsake them. I don't know whether this is your inheritance, but I'm claiming this as my inheritance. And I'm praying that I am ready. I am ready. I pray for my heart. I pray for the church that we are ready. That when it is time for the Lord to arise, and I know it is now, that he will not hold himself back. He will not restrain anymore. He will break forth and lay the mountains into waste, dry up the marshes, lead the blind. You know, the blind is somebody who has no idea and just have your hand held and shown the way you should go. And he is promising us not to forsake us. And then he says in verse 17, And this is why I say this message is for both the believers and the non-believers. They will be turned back and utterly ashamed. They will be turned back and utterly ashamed. Those who trust in idols, they will be turned back and utterly ashamed. Those who trust in idols and say to metoplated images, you are our gods. Those that trust in other gods, they will be turned back and utterly ashamed. When he arises, I don't want shame to be my portion, but there are people receiving shame as their portion. Those that trust in idols, they will be turned back and utterly ashamed. I know whatever I'm speaking right now is very prophetic. And I'm going to conclude by a vision, one of the last visions that I will share concerning this that I saw. And in this vision, I saw... I love... I love flyers graphics i am very particular i'm a perf the media department they know i'm i'm a perfectionist like the people i work with for the flyers the banners i'm very particular and in and uh, that is now in the natural and in this vision i saw some very well done flyers graphics marketed but whatever was being marketed was chaotic and fake and i was groaning and weeping i was weeping and weeping and like in the in the vision i could not stop crying i could not stop crying and i kept crying and i was like my heart is breaking i'm like people are like drawn to it because the marketing level the way it's done is so high tech it's so well done but i could see it's fake and i was crying uncontrollably i'm like what is going on and then i could see that the genuine the genuine the genuine thing was substandard substandard I, and I cried I cried and I was crying I was like putting it like on a comparison in the vision of, I was seeing like I was putting both both this graphs graphic flyers designs it's, it was all about media I was putting both in a comparison and I was crying I was like if people go by the excellence, this 
people that are not genuine, the fake ones will draw many. And these ones that are genuine, whatever they are producing is substandard. Yet what they have is genuine. And I couldn't, I, I couldn't bring myself to stop crying. I kept crying. And then someone in the dream came and showed me. I said, I want you to look. Touched my eyes and said, I want you to now look. And when I looked now to this ones that were really high tech, after he touched my eyes, I started seeing like the way, I don't know how to explain it, but in my country, there was a way you'd note a fake note. There's a way you, you, you'd put it, I don't know whether about there are fake notes here in this country, but in my country, there were counterfeit notes. And if you're in a business where you do transaction by cash, there's a way you'd, you'd be taught how to raise the, the note up to the light and then you check the watermark. If it's fake, it didn't have it. But it was something similar to that. So after this person who appeared in my vision and touched my eyes, touched my eyes, he told me, now look. And then when I looked, I started to see that whatever they had put up, no matter how beautiful it looked, it lacked a zeal. There was a seal that was missing in it. And I started now laughing joyfully, but tears were streaming. Like, you know, like the way you are happy and you're crying. So now I was laughing, I'm crying, but I, I was like, they don't have a seal. They don't have a seal. And then I turned back on the others. They're like, yeah, it's substance, but they have a seal. They have a seal. And I heard a voice saying, and the more, the more I continued looking at both, it's like the ink just got washed away and they just disappeared, vanished. And everybody could see through like they couldn't hide anymore. They were exposed. And I heard a voice saying, their time is up. Their time is up. No more. Their time is up. And when I when when that vision was over, the first person I, I always my husband is the first person who gets to to experience this, I was like, I, I, I told him, time is up for the fake. Time is up. The Lord has told me the time is up. There will be exposed. There will be exposed. I didn't know about this verse and what the Lord is saying, but as I continued in prayer, the Lord started speaking to me that when he is not going to hold anymore, this is what is happening. They will be turned back and utterly ashamed. And this is why the Lord was saying, it's not for us, church, to get worked up, to get frustrated. And asking why should wickedness continue thriving? Let's do our part because the Lord is doing his part. In the name of Jesus, are we ready for after his silence? Are we ready to be held by his hand and led by unfamiliar parts? Are we ready when the light shines in those dark places? Are we standing in a place where we will not be partakers of shame? In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, because his silence is not forever. His silence is not forever. His silence is not forever. Can we stand on our feet?
Thank you, Jesus. We bless you, Lord. We give you glory, Lord. For like a mighty man of war, you are arising. You are going forth, Lord. With a cry, with a roar. And you are prevailing against your enemy. For a long time you have held your peace. You have been still. You have refrained yourself. But you're saying now you will cry. Like a travailing woman. You will destroy and devour at once. You will make west the mountains and hills. You will dry up all their hearts. And make the rivers islands. And dry up the pools. You will bring the blind by a way that they knew not. You will lead them in paths that they may not have known. You will make darkness light before them. And crooked things straight. We thank you for your making the crooked things straight. There's things you are doing. And you are not going to forsake us. Oh Lord we thank you. For you shall turn back and great trees shall they be ashamed they that trust in graven images and they that say to the molten images they are our gods my god you know in verse 21 the bible says as we continue to pray Verse 21, the Bible says, Can you give me the King James Version in verse 21 as you continue in prayer? The Bible says, The Lord is well pleased for his righteousness sake. He will magnify the law and make it honorable. The Lord is well pleased for his righteousness sake. No, when in his silence people despise even your God they ask where is your God but when his silence is over he is glorified he is honored and he's about to be honored in your life he's about to be honored in your life and people are about to be to say I want to be identified with your God I want to be identified with your God. I want your God. I want a God who fights for me like he has fought for you. Because when the season of that silence is over, everyone will say, surely there is a God because he has done it for you. He has done it for you. He has done it for you. I declare in the name of Jesus, in every place, where you have been humiliated, where you have been embarrassed, where people have asked, where is your God? It shall be known that you are the child of the Most High God in the name of Jesus. For he shall be honored. He shall be magnified. He shall be given glory in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. For you're making a way, even where there seems to be no way. In Jesus' name, we give you glory. We give you glory. We give you glory, Lord. 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 Even after 400 years, Lord, when you spoke, you spoke to Mary. And even today, Lord. We experience your goodness. We thank you for when you break your silence. It is known, Lord. It is known, Lord. In Jesus' name. We give you glory. We give you glory. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. For your silence is not forever. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say amen. Amen. Can we appreciate the Lord? Hallelujah. Appreciate the Lord with a clap offering. 
Amen. Minister to two, three people with the points that you have received today in his silence. Even if you feel his absence, trust his presence and his silence is not forever. Amen. You can greet two, three people and tell them that. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. In his silence, even if you feel like he's absent, trust his presence. Amen. Trust his presence. Trust his presence. Let's trust his presence because his silence is not forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. I'm just gonna make one announcement and then I'll sit down and as we give and then Minister Mickey's gonna come. Amen. Today we have water baptism. Amen. Uh, let's appreciate um, Pastor Mickey because the first class of water baptism uh, will be baptized today. Amen. So immediately after the service, uh, we will all go to the baptism site and have the baptism service. Amen. Amen. As we prepare to give, welcome uh, Minister Mickey and we can do the rest of the announcements. Pastor Lucy and Minister Simon for that powerful word. I have really been blessed. I can speak for myself. I don't know about the others, but by the look I can see, by the looks I can see that we have all been blessed. Amen. Even as we give, there are different ways of giving. Uh, you can send it through Cash App at hashtag Glorious Power Church, or you can visit the Glorious Power Church website, which is www.gloriouspowerchurch.org. Stroke give. You can also scan this a barcode behind of your at the back of your bulletin. It's an easier way you can just scan it than give through there. And let me read from the pastor's desk. It says, Happy Sunday. Total dependence on the Lord. Psalms chapter 46, verse 10. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Oftentimes you are faced with trials and tensions in life which tend to discourage us from moving forward. The challenges can be overwhelming, but God is telling us to let go of the grip and trust in him. God is instructing us to wait on him because he, he is in control. Let's be still, surrender, and stop our futile efforts in dealing with things that are, that are in his domain. Blessings, Minister Miki Mwangi. And on announcements, I'm going to start with the meetings and programs. What we happened today, we had the intercession group or the intercession team met from 9 to 10 a.m. Then we had our wellness check-in time from 10.30 to 10.55. And we had the main worship service from 11 to 1 p.m. And now I'm, I'm reading this so to inform you that when we say the church starts at 9 or at 11, it doesn't mean you have to be here at 11. You can come early for the intercession team and the wellness check-in time. Praise God. Amen. And today we have the water immersion baptism, as you have been told by Pastor Lucy. It's at 243 Westford Street, Chelmsford, 0184, Massachusetts, 0184, from 3 to 5 p.m. And on announcements, the church is open from Monday through Friday from 6 to 9 in the morning for the morning glory and at the same time podcasts are released on every podcast platform and on tuesday we have the tuesday prayer line conference from 9 to 10 p.m and the number to call is 978-419-9763 on wednesday we have the wednesday upper room fellowship which is led by pastor alex and minister susan from 6 30 to 8 p.m 
On Friday, we have the Purposeful Generation Night from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. And on we concluded the Bible story times on Saturday, so just disregard that on the bulletin. And I believe that's all on the announcements. Now let us pray for the offering. Let us pray. Mighty and everlasting Father, we bless the offerings that we have given. For your word, you have said that if we give or when we give, we'll receive a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. We speak thy word in our lives, and we prophesy, Lord, that it shall come to pass. And for those who do not have anything to give, we desire, Lord, that you may give them. And even if they have given, Lord, the service, receive it, Lord, as a sacrifice. For it is the mighty blood of Christ that put us in and believe. Amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot sleep. He who watches you. Uh -huh. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither sleep nor slumber. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and your going, both now and forever.